hot topic, judging by the comments and questions that we get on this channel and through our website and in our forum, is whether we should use stop start or we should idle the engine. Now, the problem we've got is you can't do both. You either use stop start and don't idle the engine, or you idle your engine and you switch stop start off. But both schools of thought will state that idling the engine is bad for the engine and also stop start is bad for the engine. Now, there's a lot of myths and misunderstandings about these topics. I see a lot of AI voiced channels giving out really bad information and just whipping up a frenzy of hatred towards both of these options. I thought it would be time to look at some of the facts, look at what is actually happening during these systems and help us as a driver to make an informed decision as to what would be best for our engine at any given time. And at the very end of the video, we'll be reviewing a set of circumstances to go through to think about whether it's best to idle the engine or it's best to use the stop start system. Now, first of all, let's tackle stop start. A lot of people say that stop start degrades the engine or causes excessive wear and tear. Now, when you drill down, some of this concern is down to oil starvation. The fact that the engine is switched off, it means that all the oil is drained down into the sump. What's the reality there? Well, if you've ever stripped down an engine that's been sitting in the yard for two or three weeks, you'll notice that the inside of the engine still has a film of oil on it. The components in the engine are still oily. Now, we're not talking about two to three weeks. We're talking about a matter of seconds inside the engine. And the modern stop start engine has been designed to restrict the flow of oil back to the sump to keep oil in the head. You've probably noticed that when you drain the oil on a modern stop start engine, it takes a lot longer for all of the oil to drain out than it did on older engines that didn't have the stop start system, which means that the oil starvation issue is really one of those myths. It's not really a significant problem on your modern engine with stop start. Does stop start itself cause extra wear and tear on the engine through the continual vibrations through starting and stopping the engine? Well, that answer is going to depend a little bit on what engine you've got and how well it's been designed. I have heard reports from some owners of specific engines and specific cars that things like the timing chain or the timing chain tensioner have failed and they will attribute that primarily to the stop start action. The reality is though that instead of running the engine and having all those components inside the engine moving all of the time, you're shutting that off. You could probably argue successfully that the wear and tear you save by not running the engine is offset by any extra wear and tear that might happen through starting the engine. In most situations, there is no extra wear and tear when you start the engine. The next argument I hear a lot against stop start is the fact that you're doing lots of short journeys. Instead of doing one long journey, the stop start is turning it into short journeys. Now, the problem with short journeys is the engine hasn't warmed up you're using the car in a very cold operating temperature. And that's where the problems are. I've done other videos that go in depth into what happens during those cold start periods. Is that true of a car that uses stop start? Well, the engine warms up. You've broken your, say, 20 minute drive into four, five minute drives or smaller chunks. In the first minute or so, the engine is warming up. From that point on, whether the engine is on or off, it is still warm. Most of the problems associated with these short journeys and cold drives no longer apply to your engine, even if it is stopped and started again, unless of course you have the engine switched off for a long period of time. One thing to think about is battery drain. If you're in the summer and you're using the air conditioning or there's a big electrical load on the car, it may be that you're sitting there in traffic with the engine off and the battery is going to drain. Now, thankfully, modern stop start systems monitor the battery voltage. And if it gets below a certain threshold, it stops the stop start system from operating. You can minimize the wear and tear on the battery to minimize the cycles it goes from fully charged to discharged just by switching off stop start in those conditions. So that might be one area where you want to switch off the stop start system. Another argument against stop start is the delay you get starting the engine. If you've ever driven a modern car with stop start, it is almost 
instantaneous. I can't lift up the clutch quickly enough to beat the stop start system. The engine is running by the time I'm at the biting point. If you're in an automatic, things are slightly different because you don't have a clutch to operate. So you would be expecting instantaneous response. And it may be a fraction of a fraction of a second slower in lifting off. But the reality is stop start is not a great inconvenience unless you've got a really bad design system or a really old car. Now we tackle idling. The problem with idling is fuel dilution. This is where the oil collects unburnt fuel and moisture from the engine. And instead of being oil flowing around the engine to lubricate it, it's diluted. So it's not as good at providing the lubrication and the protection as it was originally when it first was put into the car. Now this happens more on cold engines you get greater degradation of the oil during these short trips, these short journeys. When the engine is warm, you can theoretically idle it indefinitely. In fact, idling the engine, you can use up the whole fuel tank and there is very little degradation to the oil. In most engines, there's going to be a few exceptions out there, but we are wasting fuel. It's estimated that you lose between half to a litre of oil every hour you're idling the engine. And you probably will say you won't be idling for an hour, but it does build up over time. If you're stuck in traffic for 10 minutes and that happens repeatedly through the week, you'll very quickly rack up this hour and you'll have wasted that amount of fuel. We have noted, though, that idling can often build up carbon in direct injection engines. The engine is not running as efficiently at idle and there is greater capacity for carbon buildup to happen. We'll also be pumping out more emissions. So the pollution levels will be much greater through an idling engine. And that's probably one of the other reasons why people hate idling cars and say that we shouldn't ever do it. What's the truth then? What should we be doing as a driver when it comes to using stop start or idling? Well, the key thing really is, is the engine warm and are we going to do longer journeys. If the engine is warm, it really doesn't matter whether the engine is starting and stopping or whether we're idling. But if the engine is cold, that's where the excessive wear and tear happens. That's where we start to see a problem. And we would make a decision as to whether to use stop start, depending on how long the delay is going to be. If we're in traffic and it's going to be an appreciable delay, use stop start, shut off the engine. If the engine is being stopped and started every 20 to 30 seconds because you've got this annoying urban start stop traffic, then in those situations, most drivers will switch off stop start completely. Because most of the damage occurs at startup on the cold engine, I would use the stop start system after about a minute or two. Give the engine a little bit of chance to circulate the oil to build up enough heat and then minimize that further degradation that you would get when idling the engine by just allowing the stop start system to cut in. Then when the engine is fully warmed up, it doesn't matter too much. It's not going to cause a significant problem. And overall, we're just talking about reducing the lifespan of your car by, say, 10,000 miles or so. That may be a year off the overall lifespan of your car. And I'm fully aware that a lot of drivers are not planning to keep their car indefinitely. They just want it to get them through a five to seven year period. Let me know in the comments what your replacement schedule is for cars. I hope that's just answered some of the questions that were raised in one of our previous videos. And thanks for watching. Please boot the like button if you found this video useful. Please let me know your comments on stop start systems and idling, whether you are pro or against, or whether this video has maybe changed your perception a little bit and you're a little bit more relaxed about doing something that maybe you were really adamantly against before you watched this video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. That does help us to get out there when the algorithm sees subscribers. And I've lined this video and this playlist up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.